Hey everyone, my video making has been interrupted by yet another round of mask making, and I, I talked about this briefly on Twitter while I was showing off the latest design I was working with, and someone asked me to share the pattern for that mask and or make a video talking about it, so let's do this. That mask was based on a pattern by University of Minnesota alum Shannon Williamson, who is a user experience designer with Medtronic. The pattern is available as a PDF with some basic instructions, and I've put a link to the pattern and some more information in the video description box below. Williamson's pattern is not the easiest to make, especially for someone like myself who's not particularly good at sewing, but the mask has some nice features. For example, there's a stitched channel that runs along the top and is open on the sides that you can slip a nose bar into. Let me just uh, flip this around here. You can slip a nose bar in there and then scoot it up that way um, so that the mask will actually bend and form appropriately to seal at the nose and below the eyes. And, and of course, being removable, you can just replace the nose bar. And if you don't have nose bars, you can put some wire up in there, whatever, whatever works for you. Um, it also has a filter pocket that you can put a, uh, a filter inside of, just right in here. And something that I think is one of the better features is the design is based on a pretty extreme curvature. And what e exaggerates this curvature even more is there's a, a couple pleats that you put in the top edge that helps to pull this top edge down a lot. And that helps to create this, this really aggressive curve, which keeps the end of the mask away from your nose, because a lot of mask designs will pull on your nose. This one does not. And it keeps the mask away from your mouth area. Through my experimenting, I have made some minor modifications to the design. The instructions suggest that uh, these seams right here should be opened up and ironed open like that. Um, I don't really like that idea because I feel like, you know, that the seam gets pulled, you're kind of creating a pathway between the inner and outer shells. Uh, so what I've been doing is ironing the seam over to one side like that, uh, so that if the, the seam is pulled apart a bit, you're you're opening up into a fold, um, and the inner and outer shells, I'll just iron them so that they're facing opposite directions when stitched together, so you're not actually creating um, a thicker layer of cloth at the intersection of all those seams. It's the same as it would be if they were, they were open. I also don't particularly like folding the, the end bits to create the pathway for uh, the cord that holds it on to go through, so what I did is uh, just created these extra little panels here that I stitch on, and then what we do is we flip the little ear inside out, which creates a little pocket ear, and then when you reverse the entire mask, um, which I know this one looks terrible, but that's just because this was uh, something I made out of scraps that I was experimenting with, which, I mean, before you try making one of these, just experiment, figure out what works. Um, but when you turn it all right side out, you have the edge of the inner liner right there, which leads to your filter pocket. Um, and then there's this little flappy pocket here, which we fold over and then just run a stitch along there to secure it, which creates a pathway for the attachment cord. So that would turn out something like this. You've got one stitch there holding it. You've got a straight shot through here for the cord and then your uh, filter pocket right here. Obviously a change like that requires a little more material to cut the extra panel and also to, uh, to lengthen the end tab section so that there's enough material to you know, take care of seam allowance and then folding back over. Because if you don't have enough material, uh, you'll end up like this early prototype where everything is too short. And so I can't fold this over to actually create a pathway for anything to go through. This side was just barely long enough. So yeah, make, make sure you measure twice and cut once. Uh, granted, I'm also scaling this design down uh, 10% so that it, it fits my wife. And speaking of sizing, um, don't be afraid to actually just print the pattern out on printer paper and do something horrible like staple it together to create um, you know, these simple mock-ups to use in order to make sure that you have your sizing right. Anyway, like I said, I'm terrible at sewing, but let's make a mask.
Well, there we have it, one completed mask. And this one actually turned out reasonably well, or at least I'd, I'd like to think that it did. The next step, of course, is attaching the mask to someone's face. And there are several ways to do that. A lot of people have been using the behind the ear method, but I, I feel like that doesn't really hold the mask against the face well enough to seal. And if it does, then it's gonna get really uncomfortable on your ears for extended wear, which is why I prefer running uh, elastic cord through the mask uh, and then securing behind the neck with the top loop going over the head. So I have a little head strap assembly like this, which is inspired by the top strap of an actual respirator. Uh, and so that would sit on the head like that ish, although this one is really not sized for me. And then these pass down through the mask and then around to the back of the neck where they're secured with a little toggle. And you can get uh, this kind of elastic bungee stuff on Amazon. Uh, I'll leave uh, an affiliate link down in the video description along with uh, a link to these little toggles. Anyway, that's about it for this video. How have your adventures in mask making been going? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you happen to have any suggestions that might help me suck a little less at sewing, those can go in the comments too. And as always, I'll see you later. Thanks for sticking with me through the whole video. If you'd like to watch some more of my videos, they're over there. And also, this video was totally not an excuse just to play with the Sony ZV-1's product showcase mode.